Hi everyone, welcome to another Sporting Communities Mental Health Podcast. Sporting Communities are a community interest company. We are an ethical, non-for-profit organisation which services range from sports, coaching, youth work, mentors and family support. We are a training academy delivering a range of qualifications and we also have art and play services. Today I am joined by Denzel, Martin and Mim. So we're going to give a quick introduction and say what we've been up to during the last week. So starting with you Martin. Hi, my name's Martin. I work for Sporting Communities. I've been with them since last July. Um, I'm on a project called um, uh, the Active Youth Project. Um, I work also for a mental health charity and I'm a keen runner. And that's what I've been focusing on this week. I am getting over an injury, so I'm uh, working on a, a recovery plan. Very good. I know last time we spoke, um, you were about to go out for your first run to see how it went. So I'm assuming given that you're still running, that went okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I did a couple of uh, small runs, um, just a couple of miles uh, with a bit of walking in, in it mixed in as well to, to you know, like a, a beginning of a couch to 5k to get started. Um, and now I'm doing... Uh, three or four miles with um, a stop every mile or so just for a breather so yes yeah, oh good good, good. you enjoying it again yes yeah I'm good. Back out there. that's the main thing that's the main thing if you're enjoying it that's all that matters coming to you Mim hi uh, my name's Mim and I've been working for sporting communities for about two years now maybe a bit more um, on the different projects for Derbyshire and I've also um, recently become involved with the supporting community strand of the company so um, that's sort of working with the um, family support role and sort of mentoring you guys um, especially through this sort of difficult time so yeah it's been it's been really interesting I've really been enjoying it. Great stuff and Denzel? Hi, yeah, I'm Denzel. Uh, I've been working with sporting communities for about maybe six months, I think it's been now, um, as a youth engagement worker, a sports coach and also a songwriter. And uh, I've most recently began working on the Faith, Race and Hate project, um, which discusses obviously hate crimes and the prevention of it and how we can combat it. And um, I'm also a songwriter and a football coach outside of sporting communities also. Very good. I should just say for anyone who hasn't seen it, um, Denzel's done an awesome poem um, with regards to the project that he's working on. For anyone that hasn't checked it out, go on and check it out because it is really good. So I very much enjoyed listening to it. Thanks, Jim. Uh, no worries. Just big you up there. L little plug for you. Uh, <laughs> and coming to me last, so for those of you who haven't seen or heard from me before, I'm James. I've uh, been with Sporting Communities for a couple of years now, uh, mainly going out into the community um, and delivering sports sessions, trying to put smiles on faces. Uh, while we can't do that, we've set up these kind of podcasts um, just to try and give sort of our feedback on sort of situations, answer any questions that you've got for us um, and basically try and put you at ease if you are feeling anxious or anything like that at all. Um, I know during the last year, we've all had times where we've had our ups and downs um, and I found this very useful for myself. So hopefully the guys that have been listening have also found it useful. So that's basically why we do these. Um, this week's podcast, um, I wanted to kind of tailor to the fact that we're now pretty much a year on um, from when COVID first sort of became a thing. I think if we, if we go back 18 months and someone said COVID, you'd be like, what's that? Uh, or someone said Corona, you'd think they're offering you a drink. So <laughs> but I think them times have certainly changed. Uh, them words have slightly different meanings now. Um, and I, I kind of I was thinking to myself the other day, um, trying to think back to sort of what I was doing a year ago and sort of how I was feeling. And I remember actually being at work and we were all kind of talking about it and saying, oh, my God, this new sort of um, disease is coming over from China and we don't quite know what's going to happen. And I remember it was all sort of anybody spoke about for weeks um, and 
we sort of knew so little about it that obviously it was absolutely everywhere. And I'm not saying it's not everywhere now, but I think we're all kind of a little bit sick of hearing about it now. Um, we just want to get to the end. Whereas I think this time last year, we'd have all been there every night watching the news because we wanted to see what had come out and bits like that. Um, and so I go, I suppose I just wanted to get your thoughts one year on. Um, what do we feel we've learned individually? Um, do we feel like we're better people now than maybe we were a year ago? Um, and I suppose if someone had told you a year ago where we would be now, none of us would have believed it. Uh, but now that we are here, um, are we still optimistic about going forward, the future that we've got ahead of us? Um, so, yeah, just generally kind of a chat around that and to see what your guys' opinions are. So, I mean, coming to you, Dens, if someone had told you a year ago, we'd be sat here now doing this, talking about a virus that had spread around the world. I'm guessing you wouldn't have believed them. But <laughs> given, given that that person probably would have been right, what are your feelings on it? Well, it has been crazy. And, you know, I didn't see anything like this coming. But I think um, in terms of when you said about it, as it made us a better person, I think so. Um, I do feel slightly stronger and I do sort of have a more of an awareness to the fact that you never know what's around the corner, but you just have to be ready just to sort of deal with it, basically. And um, one thing I'm looking forward to when it's all completely over is just making the most out of opportunities. Um, one good thing that I've been sort of thinking lately is just like, what can I do when things are normal and what can I do to keep myself busy at the moment and just work on myself internally as well also, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it did come out of the blue. Uh, it was an experience mm -hmm. like, that I haven't experienced before. Um, but I'm grateful for the fact that I'm still here, that I've so far I've survived it, because there's a lot of people that obviously, unfortunately, haven't. Um, so I do see positives from it. Um, I do feel as though I'm built a bit more strong by it. I do feel as though... Um, obviously I have purpose in life do you know what I mean the fact that I'm still healthy I haven't had the virus at all either um, so now I'm just ready just to sort of go forth um, I want to I wanna do more when it's all done when things are open up more and just continue from where I initially was in terms of looking for work um, but just work even more and just work more on what I'm doing personally also yeah no 100% I think the one thing that I massively pick up from from what you've just said is sort of the thing of planning for each day and I suppose in, in making every day count I think I think before the last year I think we all kind of take things for granted and you'd have them yeah. days where you're just like meh and I think now even the little things like the fact that I don't know you can even drop your kids off at school and actually see other parents and talk to other parents about stuff that has happened yeah. and stuff like that suddenly be huge again um because i think parents and guardians or whatever will have missed that so much and actually being able to just have that daily chat with other parents when they are dropping the kids off and kids actually just being able to go to school like i mean i, I was one of them kids that when i was at school all i did was moan about being at school i wanted to be anywhere other than school but i can't imagine if someone had told me i couldn't go to school for six months i don't know what i'd have done because yeah. I, I like I, I did enjoy the social aspect. I enjoyed seeing my friends um, and socialising and everything like that. Um, I wasn't always the most hardworking child, I'll admit that part. Um, but I, I don't know what I'd have done. And I think I'd have found that really, really hard. So I think we'll all, I think we'll all take them things. We won't take them for granted. I think they're going to be things that we look forward to. And like I say, we're going to be making the most out of every day, I think, going forward. Mm -hmm. I think it's likely that a lot of people will come out of this happier than than they were before this even all happened. Yeah. Because just you know, what you just said with like our normal day-to-day -day schedules prior to the virus and then it being altered since then. And then going back to normality when it's all done. I think we'll be we'll be happier to have a job to get up and go to, happier to pick our kids up and just more appreciative and hopefully um that will just increase our um, self-esteem and just the positivity within us that we all do have, which just needs to be unlocked a little more. So yeah. I think sometimes I've learned in life in general that after you've experienced something not so nice, you can actually come out of it brighter than what you was before. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. Uh, Mim, what, what are your opinions on it a year on? 
Um, I'm very mixed, I think. I mean, it's been really difficult, um, especially sort of this lockdown, I think, because we're all sort of starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel, you know. Um, we'd come out of lockdown, it was all looking great, and then here we are back again. But I think, for me, the biggest thing is I've, I've realised I'm more capable than I realised perhaps I was. And um, the fact that, you know, it, it's been so difficult and it's not something that any of us have experienced before or, um, you know, it, it's just so, so strange. And the fact that actually I have been able to get out, out of bed every morning and do my work and still be focused and, you know, face them challenges head on and still be in a position that I am now and you know I'm I'm so grateful for all my friends and my family and just the sort of support that I've seen other people give in um yeah it's it's made me more appreciative of myself in a weird way that I'm actually sort of that I'm more able than I realized I was and it's made me appreciate my friends and family a ton more because the support that I've seen them given so yeah I don't know although it's it's sort of like a silver lining in a bad situation I suppose there's there's nothing good really to come out of it as such but I think the sort of the mental side of it and sort of realizing how strong we are as people and how strong everyone else is that that's what I'm taking away from this I think yeah yeah no I think absolutely and I think that thing of that self-worth I think that you've gained for yourself during that last year I think if nothing else that is a huge, huge thing because if, if it has made you realise, you know what, I'm stronger than I thought I was and I've got bigger network of support than I thought I had, that's still going to be there. When, when all of this ends, that's still there. So you know you've got that now. So, yeah, I think that's a huge positive to take, I have to say. It's also made me realise that I watch way too much Netflix. So I Yeah, it, in, all fa- in all fairness, I, I don't think you're alone in that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that that may be like a worldwide problem. So, <laughs> yeah, I think every, everyone's normally, you know, like for when it gets to Lent and stuff like that, people give up chocolate and all stuff like that. I reckon this year everyone's going to be giving up Netflix and stuff like that. It's going to be completely different this year. So <laughs> we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, how about you, Martine? What are your opinions a year on? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm same as Mim. I'm a bit mixed. It's, you know, it's been been tough especially this this last lockdown um i mean we do know that we're coming out of it now but it's it's a slow process and we know it's going to take a a long time before we can class ourselves as being back to normal but i i also appreciate now i think um little things things that you probably let slip by in in the daily life you know when you're rushing about in, in your in your normal normal life um so yeah just reflecting and and appreciating things a bit more is probably something that i'll i'll take out of it yeah no i think that's really good i was actually um i was actually chatting to a young person the other day um and we were sort of on about lockdown and how they were feeling and stuff like that and they they were quite open and said that they were feeling a little bit down and they kind of basically said you know what I've had enough of it now and they they were like I've 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 kind of been through it I feel like I feel like we should be out of this now and I said to them I said what what are you looking forward to most um when all of this is done and they said choice they said the one thing that I'm looking forward to the most is having a choice as to what I can do they said it's not so much the fact of actually doing it it's not the fact that I can go and spend time with my friends it's not the fact that I can go to school it's not the fact that I can go bowling I can go to the cinema they said it's actually the fact that on an evening I can choose what I want to do and that made me kind of take a step back and go oh my god I think you're so right because it's not actually always the things that you were used to doing that you miss the most. It's the fact that you can make the choice to do it. It's having that that independence to yourself to go, do you know what? I'm going to go for a drink. Do you know what? I'm just going to go and meet my mate at the park, whatever. Go and have a kick about. And I think to have that choice taken away, especially for young people um, who are sort of finding their way in life and everything like that, it, it is, it's so difficult. And I think like you've just said, Martin, I think all them little things that perhaps before we weren't as appreciative of 
I think I think we're all gonna we definitely won't be taken for granted in the future. Um, I think when stuff does open back up again, I think we're all gonna be so excited to actually get out there and do everything that we've missed doing. Um, I, I hope personally that it makes the world a happier place. Um, I hope that it makes people happier, that it makes people more forgiving of each other um, and actually just be nicer to one another. Um, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that there's quite a lot wrong with the world. Um, and one of the main things that I think is wrong with the world is the way that people treat each other. Um, and unfortunately, there's still way too much of that go on. But I hope that actually the last year, everybody will have struggled at one point or another. And every single person will that is listening to this or is even on this, I know us four have, we've got through it. We're, we're here to tell the tale. So we've got through the tough times. And I know, speaking from experience, that actually it's other people that have helped me get to where I am today. And so I'm thankful for that. And so actually, if people are having a bad day and stuff like that, help them. Don't make their day worse. Um, and I suppose that's that's my one thing um, for the last year that I've kind of taken myself. Um, I don't think I always reached out and helped people as much as I possibly could have done. Um, and I want to going forward. Um, but it is, it's just be nice to each other. It's not that hard to be nice. Um, and so if someone is having a bad day, don't make it worse, try to make it better. And that's, that's my one thing from this year, I think really. That's wicked. It really is. Yeah. I mean, ho hopefully everyone else has the same kind of opinion. Um, mm. I know us speaking on here, I know we all do. Um, and I know from speaking to young people out there that that's how they feel. And actually, a lot of them have probably, they'll have missed seeing their friends that much that when their friends annoy them, they'll think, well, they're not that bad, are they? Because it was worse when I didn't get to see them for six months than them talking rubbish. So, <laughs> as I say, hopefully we'll be a little bit more understanding of each other. Yeah. Well, we say that now. <laughs> we yeah, so one, one, week, one week back in society, I'll be like, right, I'm ready for lockdown again now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So that brings me on to my next question, which, as I say, I asked this to um, the young person I was speaking to the other day. But if you could pick one thing that you are looking forward to most when we come out of lockdown, what is it? Um, so I'll go in the opposite order. Martine, starting with you, the one thing you're looking to forward to most when we properly come out and you're told, you know what, everything's opened up. You can do whatever you want. What's the one thing you're looking forward to most of all? Getting my running club back and up and running. <laughs> How did I know yours was going to uh, center around running? How did I know that? <laughs> I just, I can't wait to get us all back together again. It just seems such a long time since we've all been able to, to just run together. Yeah. Was no, that great. within sporting communities, Martine, or a separate group elsewhere? No, it's it's um, a running group that I run with uh, my husband and, and a couple of friends. All oh, right. Wow. Okay. And that was like, is it normally a weekly thing or? Yeah, yeah, three times a week. Wow, three times. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Dens, Dens, Dens doesn't sound like he's signing up anytime soon, Marty. No, I became interested until he said three times. <laughs> if you said once a month, he might have been interested. You don't have to do all three. I have to do all three, but you don't have to do all three. <laughs> So how about you, Mim? Same question. What are you looking forward to most? Um, I think oh, there's so many things. Um, probably seeing my best friend because she lives on her own completely. I'm lucky enough that I actually live, I've got people in my household, but she's completely on her own. And although we speak every day, it's just not the same. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her I think, yeah. more than anything. That's nice. That's nice. Is this the one that sends you uh, encouraging text messages? Yeah, or every day. Or maybe slightly less encouraging text messages, depending on if yeah. you need <laughs> You need that sometimes, though. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do, 100%. We all need that one friend that tells us the truth, so... That's yeah. it. Always how about honesty. You, um, it's a tricky one for me. There's a couple things, but... um. Mm, I guess maybe going to restaurants and eating some real nice food. I'm, I'm really excited to do that. I love my food, man. Love my food. Like, so so what's, what's top on the restaurant list? 
Um, I like Red Street Barbecue, um, okay. which do like barbecue pulled pork and these big burgers and things like that. Um, what else do I like? Obviously, I like Caribbean food as well. I might take a trip to a Caribbean restaurant or something. Um, anything really. I just want to get out there, try new food, to new restaurants, and just yeah, man, just. Yeah, probably gain about 10 stone, but last for living. <laughs> well, even more reason to sign up to Martin's Running Club then if you're going out for all this food. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's very true. I'll drop myself in it now, aren't I? <laughs> 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 now, I was also going to say football. Obviously, I'll be doing a lot of running then. Um, it's been a while since I kicked the ball, so maybe that too. But just similar to what Mim said with the whole socialising aspect too, I think anything that I'm looking forward to do, it'll all, it all involves socialising with friends and that and just um catching a good vibe you know yeah yeah i have to say i think i think for me i think it'll be again it's meeting mm. up with friends family just people that yeah. you, you i suppose like like martin was said you take for granted that you see yeah. them and suddenly through no fault of our own you suddenly don't see these people for months on end mm. um and i think i think to have that it is it is a big shock um and it is it is hard to adapt to um and like i said before anyone anyone who's listening to this or watching this or whatever you you've got through it to this point so just keep doing what you're doing um yeah. because if you if you've made it if you've made it this far then that's that's a really good thing um and it doesn't mean that everything's going to be rosy from here on out because it's not and there will be more challenges along the way. And do you know what? When stuff starts to open up, I'll be honest, I, I don't tend to get that anxious about them kind of situations, but I'll feel a little bit anxious about going to certain things. And I must admit, I'm, I'm a big football fan, same as yourself, Denzel. So I like going to the football. Now, mm. if I'm suddenly in a stadium with thousands and thousands of fans, it's going to be hard to stand there or sit there with all of them fans around you and not be a little bit conscious of everything that's happened during the last year. Yeah. Um, but I think I think what we have to do is we have to go by the fact that stuff will open up at the right times and it will open up when it's safe to do so. And so if it, if they're saying it's safe and if they're saying that we should be going out there and reinteracting back with society, then obviously you have to do it in your own steps and you have to do what you're comfortable with. Um, but when when we are allowed to get back out there, do it. Because actually the longer you wait to go and do it, the worse that then becomes in your head, the more it's going to build up um, and the bigger that problem will be. So don't suddenly just jump out cold turkey and go for it, but take little steps to build yourself up until you feel ready to go back out there. Because that's that's what I'm going to do. It might be a case of when I'm allowed to meet up with people, I'm not going to suddenly say to everyone I know, right, let's meet in, let's, let's meet in Nando's this Saturday and suddenly everybody's there that you know and you feel Nando's. Um, it's a case of meeting up with a couple of people at a time and just making sure that we're still staying as safe as possible. Um, but I think the interesting thing, asking all of you guys what you're looking forward to most, it's all about socialising. Um, I think that's the one aspect that we've all missed the most, that we take for granted every day. Um, and I know from speaking to you guys, we all can't wait to be able to meet up. It's actually funny because... Uh, a few of us have never actually met in person, uh, which you guys watching and listening won't actually know. Uh, but I'm actually really looking forward to actually meeting all you guys properly um, and actually being able to sort of oh, actually it. introduce ourselves formally and whatever. But do you know what I mean? Like these, these yeah. things we take for granted. Yeah. Um, and normally yeah, right, where yeah. we're doing this kind of thing without actually meeting each other. And yet we are. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's what another thing I'm looking forward to. Yeah, most that's definitely. That's nice, James. No, it is. And you're just reminding me, James, actually, there has been a, a couple of people that we all work with that I've had conversations with about meeting up outside of work, either to do work things like, or just, you know, I mean, just to sort of develop a relationship. So there is also that aspect as well that I'm looking forward to also. Yeah. Just Great. make sure you clear of the Rona, James, first, please. <laughs> I'm playing. I no, see what that'll, I can be do. No, that'll be wicked. Very good. Right. Um, I think that's pretty much it from us for this week. Um, for any of you guys that are watching and listening, um, if you want to drop us a comment with anything that you're looking forward to doing once lockdown opens up, 
um, and you're able to go back out there, the one thing you're looking forward to most, we'd love to hear it from you. Um, and as always, if you do have any questions that you want us to answer, please send them in um, and we'll answer them during the next podcast for you. Um, but other than that, thank you very much for listening and watching. Um, we look forward to speaking to you again soon and we hope you all stay safe and take care. Bye. See you later, guys. Thank stay you. safe. Yeah. Yeah.